Hey, hey, it's cool, Bella. I ain't mad at you. That's what friends do. You guys are welcome here anytime. Although Ashen abuses the anytime part a lot. I don't really mind. <laughs> <laughs> we might have less wiggle room if all four of us are present, considering the size of this place. But as long as no one makes anything explode, it's totally fine. Ashton. <laughs> fine or not, I still really want to ask nice trouble, especially since you... Hello everyone and welcome back to 4 Pixels. Coco and Kimi are here with our guests, Layfle from Cacophony of Games and Buttons. We are continuing the letter. Yes, yes we are. I thought you were being a snake so, for a second. I was really I, confused. Did I, did I read that or read it again since we're okay. in the episode? He drops the call before I can even get a word in, and for several minutes after, I find myself simply listening as the rest of Luxmore rouses. The increasing sound of passing traffic, the bustle of the nearby shops preparing for the day, and the growing clamor of the people while they go about their morning. Not the most soothing sounds to hear following a troubled night, but the routine puts me at ease nevertheless. What's comforting, what's safe, what I'm used to. Nearby, Isabella shifts but doesn't wake, blissfully unaware as the city slowly steers itself back to life. Miss. Was her night as restless as the one I had? Were her dreams as lucid? In harsh moments like this, I envy her. Unreasonable, probably a little unfair, to say such in light of last night. If only forgetting is as easy as breathing. Mm. A small yawn escapes me when I rise from the couch to a stretch. Luckily, the short conversation with Ash has effectively driven away any will to go back to bed. I still have a day to get through despite the proverbial ghost hanging around. Just proverbial. <laughs> <laughs> the orange bottle sitting at the edge of my table is reassuring against my palm the instant I pick it up. The esteril odor of the capsules, equally so. Yet the way they carry is something I've never gotten used to. Years ago, I'd spend minutes, heck, even hours, staring at a single pill prior to taking one in. Now it's just routine, a way to stay off the unwanted nightly visits. Although I don't think Dr. Navarro will be quite pleased if he ever finds out I'm relying on them again. I do owe him a visit regardless, especially after missing our appointments on purpose and ignoring his calls for weeks. Yo, relatable. Yo. <laughs> Another sigh comes out, tired and weary, and then I pop the, ta the tablet into my mouth. Tablet? Table? Ta tablet. Zach? Tablet. Ta what time okay. is it? The bottom of my hand hits the table with more force than necessary. As much as I trust my friends, there are some things I'd rather keep to myself. Morning, Bella. Did you sleep well? <sighs> she answers the question with a long drawn out yawn. One reminiscent of a child. <laughs> I chuckle manages to come out of my mouth at the side. In this manner, it's easy to mistake her for someone too young for responsibilities. Inexperienced and immature, even. Eh. Easy to forget she was thrust into the role of an adult earlier than her own dreams can afford, to overlook how surprisingly observant she can be at times. 
maybe not on the same level Ash exercises for his investigations, or Rebecca needs for her own work. But it's certainly enough to definitely put what she sees around her on canvas. And if the way her eyes flickers to the table and my hand says something, it is that I won't be able to avoid the questions this time. Only a little. I don't remember how I ended up on the bed, though. My doing. You didn't look very comfortable sleeping on the couch, all hunched up like that. It would have been enough for something temporary. Sorry I stole your bed. Hey, it doesn't matter. Besides, what kind of gentleman would I be if I leave a lady sleeping in such uncomfortable conditions? Not in this house. My nana would give me a tough scolding if I ever did that, I'm telling you. Thanks a lot, Zack. I know I barged in at a very inconvenient time last night. I... I wasn't really thinking when I did, and... Hey, hey, it's cool, Bella. I ain't mad at you. That's what friends do. You guys are welcome here anytime. Although Ashen abuses the anytime part a lot. I don't really mind. <laughs> <laughs> we might have less wiggle room if all four of us are present. Considering the size of this place. But as long as no one makes anything explode, it's totally fine. Ashton. <laughs> fine or not, I still owe you one for last night's trouble. Especially since you don't seem to be... A concerned expression passes over her features as she spares another cursory glance over the table, back to the bottle holding every small piece of what keeps the bad memories at bay. The blood blooming over past heart, the horrified look in Ma's face as she watches him fall lifeless to the ground, and every ounce of a spite seeping from the stranger's smile. You don't belong here. Your monkeys don't belong here. Wow! Yo, go fuck themselves. I know, right? It never stops, doesn't it? Well, you don't seem to be feeling well. Let me know, okay? I'll make it up to you somehow. She makes a slight gesture with her head towards the bottle. Asking a question without really asking. Bella, just take him to breakfast, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Subtlety has never been one of her greatest assets, but right now, I mean, Ash would have been a little amazed, if not a loss for words at that. Yeah, well, I mean, he did make the you need a psychiatrist comment, so I find that a little hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. Nodding at a bottle is a lot more subtle than that comment. There's a lot that's a lot more subtle than that comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has left she has left it up to me whether I ever give her the response she wants to hear or not. A little clever coming from her, if anyone will ask me. I'm inclined towards telling the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But it's never easy, ain't it? Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Talking about my own problems, that is. It will never be. Not by a long shot. Not when I've let it stay this way for so long. I realized that long ago when the wounds are still fresh and the dreams are a nightly occurrence. Can't force yourself to get better or move on to better things. It is what's normal now and I can only cope. The question in her eyes may be unwarranted, born simply out of curiosity and sincere concern for a friend. I don't know where an explanation, in fact. But of all the people I keep close in my life, she's probably one of the very few who perhaps I can trust with this. Maybe she won't understand entirely, 
I can never hope she will. No, never to the full extent. That alone is, is expecting too much of her and giving too much of what I can. However, for all her shortcomings, I know she'll hear me out. And that is all I can ask of her. My bad. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't have seen me with these. The pills rattle lightly against the container when I gently set it back to its usual place. Always the small area closest to my laptop, near the right hand. Within reach whenever, and a quiet reminder of what I shouldn't miss every day. Hoofal down. <laughs> the cat <laughs> scared me. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't think she was oh, in here. Is it bad? I was just thinking that maybe it's a cold like Becca's. Do you need me to get anything from the store? Soup or something? There's one nearby, right? I can run real quick and... No, nothing of that sort. I'm perfectly healthy right now. It's really difficult to say, but... Can you promise me you'll listen at least? What is this about, Zack? I should have been up front with you about this a long time ago. Well, Ashton found out without me telling him anything. But you already know how that guy is. Can't hide anything from him. If it's something you're having trouble saying, you don't have to force yourself to tell me. I'll forget I ever saw anything and won't ask questions. Promise. No, I need to get this off my chest eventually. Besides, we're already here. Might as well finish what I started, yeah? If you say so. She takes a seat on the couch, her posture easy and open, and her smile honest. As if this is just a simple talk between two friends on a regular day. It is far, it is far from one, but her unreserved air is enough to stamp down the tinge of Eunice that threatens to come up. Let's hear it then. And she does. True to her words, she listened while the story spills out of my mouth, of my man Pa, that little old diner across the pond, and what it left in me that day. I can't recall most of it now, my own account yagged with a few missing details here and there. The passing years have eroded most of my recollection of the whole incident. All except for that one moment in the kitchen. The ringing of gunshots are as vivid as it sounded that day. Even mass hysterical screams the moment past body hits the floor motionless, his lifeblood flowing out from under him. And the gunman. He was smiling. He was smiling when Pa opened the door to welcome him. He was smiling when he put a bullet to past chest and mass head. I've heard stories of how the world can be cruel, a cruel place for people like us, before. I never believed until that moment. Nan and Gran took us right after that. Sis and I flew straight to New Jersey as soon as they heard the news. A few days after, Ma and Pa were laid to rest. We have a new home a kind in a way. I didn't even get the chance to take my favorite pillow with me. They said something about the change of environment would be good for us. <laughs> they had no idea the different kind of ghosts would follow me here. I expected questions, mostly those brimming with childlike curiosity, and maybe some that are a little too hard to answer. But to her credit, she just sat there, lent her ears, and looked at me with no expectations or unnecessary judgment in her eyes. She appears wiser and older like this, 
easier to see the breadwinner in her. Breadwinner, I mean. Her younger siblings are lucky to have her. When I'm done, after everything's been said, she wraps her arms around me. A bit awkward considering the gap in her height, but it gets her sentiment across. But it's difficult to answer this in kind. If I am even supposed to reciprocate the gesture given my earlier apprehension. She pulls away shortly with a smile on her face. Not the reaction I brought myself for, but it is obviously better than what I imagined. Uh, are you not gonna say anything? Am I supposed to say anything after? Like, apologize or something? I don't think that's very appropriate, but if you want to hear one, I can think of something real quick. Not really. Other people have something to say after usually, and they're not necessarily nice either. Oh, okay then. I won't. I can't think of something anyway. Sorry, I'm not very good with this. Who else knows, by the way? My older sister, grandparents, and just Ash and you for now. Maybe, maybe I think I should tell Rebecca too, but... But not right now? Her mouth acts really weirdly. <laughs> I've just been noticing I, the animation and it's... I was noticing that too, but I wasn't sure if it was delay from the screen share or not. No, that's, that's, that's like happening in the game. Yeah. I haven't mm. been paying attention to her yeah, mouth. <laughs> not right now. When I'm ready. Like today. I'm sure she'll be willing to hear you out once you do. I don't doubt she will. I'm more afraid of how she'll react after. One step at a time, yeah? Whew. Surprisingly, it feels good to get that one out of my chest. I was a little afraid you'd be angrier. I didn't tell you earlier than today. I'm not angry. I'm just surprised. You didn't look like it. I wouldn't have suspected. I suppose that's how it often is, isn't it? We all have our... Uh, what's the word Becca uses? Inner demons? But this is something personal to you. I understand why you'd rather have a few people know. That too. Well, these past few weeks haven't been easy for you. I didn't want to add that. Not after last night. Something passes in her face, brief, fleeting, and disappears right before I can recognize what it is. You okay? Yep, no worries. I'll, I'll be fine. Look, about last night. Never mind. This isn't a good time. Why not? But don't lose sleep over this, all right? What's important is you got what you want to say out. And if you need me, I'll be here. I should be relieved. Her words are more than reassuring to my ears. There should be comfort in hearing those alone, in knowing I have another person to rely on if these things ever go bad. But somehow, I find myself worrying more for her instead. I'll make another attempt to get this story out of her if I can. But this is a dance I know all too well, and with her, I doubt forcing her to say something will yield any results. As much as I want to imitate Ash, there's only so much I can ask that won't result in something a little over disastrous. At best, she'll stop talking to me until a week passes. At worst, uh, I'd rather not risk it. I've never seen her angry. Already annoyed, maybe, and often directed at Ash, but never furious. What did they say again about happiest people when angered? Besides, it'd be unfair to her after a little chat. So, uh, food then? 
She seemed relieved at the brisk change of subject, and as if it has been simply waiting for its cue all this time, her stomach rumbles at the mention of food. Rather loudly, as a matter of fact. Alrighty, Missy. We're going to get some chow now. Better be quick, though. Can't have your stomach starting a revolution on us here. <laughs> D don't make fun of me. I'm not that hungry. Maybe a little. I didn't think I'd end up skipping dinner last night. <laughs> and now we have one starved stomach protesting. Sorry, it'll be nothing fancy since I'm a little low on stocks. Hmm. I should probably drop by the grocery store after the meeting this afternoon. I can make a quick run for you if you want. Nah, I've got enough to put together something nice here. Maybe. I could always improvise if we're missing an ingredient or two. It ain't like we're going for a Michelin three-star status here. Also, didn't I say you were a guest? <laughs> Is this a Filipino thing? Or just Rebecca rubbing off on you? <laughs> the soft laughter that comes from her doesn't quite reach her eyes. Neither. The answer is neither. Because if she stays idle, she'll remember. On second thought, I might need a little help slicing up the potatoes while I prep the ham. You up for that? What? Do you think instant noodles are all I'm about? Yes. I'll have you know, I go <laughs> meet with Elia with my eyes closed. All my siblings love it. And with that, we will end this episode right here. Thank you guys for joining us, and see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. That is why it has been my wish, my vision, to change the kingdom in such a way as to eliminate the need to compromise between freedom and order altogether. In other words, in other words. Hello everyone and welcome back to 4 Pixels. Coco is here continuing Cinders and I am starting from the title screen because this this candle in the men uh, in the middle popped up when I exited out of the game last time. It said we had earned the candle of wisdom. So I I guess that is an important part of the game or at least an indicator of where we're going, and I am good with that. <laughs>